So Ravens wide receiver Demarcus Robinson is one of several pending free agents in Baltimore, having signed that one-year deal with the team last offseason. Right, meaning, Bobby, he's not guaranteed to be back next season. Yet, based on some of his recent activity on social media, Demarcus is acting like a return is set in stone, and I kind of like the confidence and energy he's putting out there. I'm Bobby Trossett, alongside my co-host Sarah Ellison. It's Friday, February 3rd. And this is your morning Ravens update from inside the vault. The Ravens search for the next offensive coordinator continues. And we've got conflicting thoughts on whether Eric Bieniemy could be the next guy. Meanwhile, if you ask former Ravens OC Martin Morningweg, he thinks John Harbaugh is casting too wide of a net and wants him to choose an internal candidate. Plus, it's obviously early on in the pre-draft process, but the Ravens were represented at this week's practices for the East-West Shrine Game, and there was one wide receiver prospect in particular that Baltimore paid close attention to. Yeah, we have all that and more coming up. Thank you for waking up with the Morning Vault, where you get the most important Ravens news in about 15 minutes. Does Ravens wide receiver Demarcus Robinson, does he know something that we don't? Right. It would appear so. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, what we do know is that D-Rob is a pending free agent who signed with the team last offseason on a one-year deal. Yet, as you mentioned at the top, partner, based on some of his recent social media posts, he's coming across as awfully confident that he's expecting to return to Baltimore next fall. All right, okay, so for those that don't know, go ahead and explain what these posts entail specifically. You're really going to make me read these captions? Of course. Give the people what they want. Let's go. All right, all right, here we go. I can already, everybody's getting their screen recording ready on the other end, right? They're going to blast me on social for this and my accent and you name it, but here goes nothing. DeMarcus left a comment on one of Rashad Bateman's recent IG posts that read the following, quote, Next year, we finna be too litty, close quote. (laughs) He also tweeted a photo with backup QB Anthony Brown with the caption that read, quote, Ravens gonna be special next season, close quote. All right, Bobby, you nailed it. I feel like I feel like you did a good job. I thought so, too. Thank you. But in all seriousness, the point is clear, right? We're still a month plus out from the start of free agency. And despite not being under contract, DeMarcus thinks he's coming back to Baltimore. Now, remember, just last month, John Harbaugh and Eric DaCosta both vowed to essentially retool the Ravens' wide receiver room. The one area that needs to be you know, built is the, is the wide receiver room. So that'll be a new room, basically. There'll be pieces of it still there. You know, you know the guys. And then we'll be adding a lot of pieces to that room, and there'll be competition, too. So that'll be the room that'll start together in this new offense and we'll build with those guys. So I think, you know, you're talking about 75% of the offense is intact and 25% and it's all in the same room will be new. And that's probably pretty normal. That makes me happy because I feel like we got a lot of guys that know ball and have had a lot of experience here. And, the, and that room that you're talking about, the wide receiver room, room can be built up. And, you know, that's, those are pieces we can give Lamar and give him a chance to really thrive. Well, it's certainly something we're going to look at. You know, obviously, uh, this season didn't end up the way we wanted it to. We had some injuries, obviously, with with Bate and with Devin. Um, you know, uh, we traded Hollywood last year, so we definitely took on some water this year at that position. We'll continue to look at that, you know, via free agency and the draft, and our role is really to just to find the best guys that fit our situation. And, um, you know, we hear the fans, we hear you guys with the questions. Um, certainly, our goal is to build the very best team we can build. And, you know, last year, one of our key, I think, missions was to build the offensive line back. And we feel excited about that and the way that we were able to do that in different ways. We think we're very, very close to building a championship team and everything that goes with that. And so we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that this offseason. Um, you know, and that'll be through the draft through free agency, potential trades, and things like that. But we will build the best team we can to compete every single week. All right, so Bobby, seriously, would you welcome DeMarcus back to Baltimore if you were the GM, if you were EDC? Oh, absolutely. But he'd have to be willing to sign up for another year on a short-term, borderline veteran minimum kind of deal in order for it to make sense monetarily. When you look at the numbers, Sarah, and availability he posted from 2022, 
He was a total bargain for Baltimore. And unlike past veteran wide receivers they've signed in the past, he played in all 17 games. I see him being a valuable depth piece in 2023, assuming he makes a full recovery from his sports hernia surgery he underwent earlier this week. That was according to one of his Instagram posts. I don't know why he wouldn't, but just wanted to throw that out there. I mean, look, in a perfect world, the Ravens 2023 pass catcher room looks like this in no perfect order. Rashad Bateman, a wide receiver picked up via free agency, a wide receiver selected in the first, you heard this, first round, you heard that right, first round of the draft, Devin Duvernay, Demarcus Robinson, and whoever wins the training camp battle between James Prochet, Andy Isabella, and Tylen Wallace. That's all I'm saying. All right, that doesn't sound like too much of a remake, but I got you. Still to come here on The Vault, Eric Bieniemy to Baltimore? Well, based on a new report, the possibility of that coming to fruition is still very much in play. So we're two weeks into Baltimore's search for its next offensive coordinator, and there have been 11, count them, 11 reported interviews with various candidates, and that's just the ones we know about. There's probably been many more behind the scenes that haven't been leaked, which means John Harbaugh is making good on his promise to cast a wide, wide net. Yeah, he definitely is, but we do have conflicting thoughts on one of the more well-known names among OC candidates, and that's Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. Now, ESPN's Adam Schefter reported a couple days ago that the Ravens requested an interview with Bieniemy, but he's also a candidate for the Colts head coaching opening, so the question becomes... If the enemy does not get a head coaching gig, why would he make a lateral move to the Ravens to be an offensive coordinator when he has the same job in Kansas City with another star quarterback and they always seem to be in the Super Bowl mix? Well, NFL Media's Ian Rappaport gave the latest for the answer on that question and the enemy's status with several teams while he was a guest on the Pat McAfee show. I think the enemy's really in play for a play calling OC job, a couple different places. You know, Baltimore, I think the commanders is really one to consider. And like, so you'd be like, well, he's already an OC. Why would he leave Mahomes? He shares play calling with Andy Reid. I mean, he does a lot of it, but he shares it. Uh, if that's were, breaking say, news again. Yeah. You said this before. That is massive news if that's the case. I think that is out there. I mean, I, I look, don't, because the conversation is always Andy Reid does all the play calling. Know that is that true? Is that factual statement? He also does I, call plays. I just know he he does a lot. Like, does he physically say the words to the quarterback? Probably not. But I know he's very, very, very involved. But it's different when you're. What's let's that say mean? he's a that's calling, calling play. What's <laughs> that mean, Rap Sheet? Let's say he's a play calling OC for a defensive head coach like Ron Rivera or for John Harbaugh. It does put him in a little bit of a different category, and it sets him up maybe to be a better head coach in the future in the minds of the owners, even though I think that's kind of dumb because being a head coach has almost nothing to do with whether or not you call plays. It's all like leadership and such. All right, a couple takeaways from that. First, as long as the enemy is in the running for that Colts head coaching job, there's no way he's taking an OC position here in Baltimore or anywhere else. Second, if he doesn't get named a head coach, it makes perfect sense to me to come to a place like Baltimore or elsewhere as the sole play caller so that he can get out from Andy Reid's shadow. And finally, the third takeaway is that as long as the Ravens are interested in the enemy, this process will last until after the Super Bowl has concluded. You know, Sarah, what's interesting is that just a few hours before Rappaport was on Pat's show, a Ravens fan asked Ed Reid on Twitter about his thoughts on the enemy interviewing in Baltimore, and he replied with this, Ed did, quote, not going to happen. Now, I know his answer is vague, and I don't know if he means that an interview won't happen or just that ultimately the enemy won't be hired by Harbs throughout this process, but I will say this. I was contacted by a former player who I trust, and he said to me that Reed really isn't plugged into the Ravens' business dealings in the matter whatsoever. So while I obviously respect and appreciate Ed's opinion, Take that for what it's worth. And, well, Bobby, regardless, it's not like this is a be enemy or bust situation, right? As you mentioned up top, there have been, at minimum, 11 interviews to date, and there are several qualified candidates. 
If you ask one of the Ravens' former offensive coordinators, and remember him, Marty Morningweg, hasn't been too long since he was the OC, he doesn't think Harbaugh should be casting a net as wide as he has been, and he gave a big endorsement to an internal candidate. Yeah, I'm surprised that they're interviewing guys that I've never heard of. Look, they need a man that understands the importance of three things, really. Uh, the, the importance of a precision passing game. That's first. And then, and then the importance of a Lamar Jackson, the threat of him running. So, so you rely on the running game and Lamar Jackson – not only to pop off some big plays, but just for the threat. That pulls defenses apart, the threat of the great Lamar Jackson uh, running with the football. And then the third thing would be the importance of a healthy quarterback, right? So, so you've got to have a really good feel. So, so I really think a man like James Urban, who's in-house, who knows and understands the importance of those three things and understands – all of Lamar's strengths and what his weaknesses are. You go outside, you're experimenting just a little bit. So, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that it's gone this long. Well, it's not surprising to me that Marty is going to bat for James Urban. After all, Morningweg did have a hand in bringing Urban to Baltimore from Cincinnati in the first place back in 2018. Those two guys worked with each other back in their Philadelphia days. But personally, Bobby, Urban wouldn't be my first pick. Bobby, Urban has been Lamar Jackson's quarterback coach for five seasons now. And the way it seems to me is that Lamar actually comes back from the offseason with better quarterback techniques, better passing techniques. And then I just don't see Urban taking him to higher levels. I mean, Lamar's already playing at high levels, but has Urban taken him to higher levels? Now, to be fair, Urban has been stuck within the confines of Greg Roman's offense too, but at the end of the day... I'd love to see a fresh set of eyes come into Baltimore and bring a different perspective to this offense led by Lamar Jackson, assuming he plays here in 2023. All right, Bobby. Now, I know it's a bit early to start discussing college wide receiver prospects that the Ravens are linked to. But it's going to be that kind of offseason in Baltimore, given their extreme need at that position. Yeah, this isn't the first or last prospect name you'll hear tied to the Ravens, but he is an intriguing player who's generating a lot of late first round buzz. I'm talking about Boston College standout wide receiver Zay Flowers, who former Raven Torrey Smith thinks is definitely a first round talent if not the top target in the entire draft. Yeah, and listen to the way Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay talk him up. Our guy, Todd, I think we both agree Zay Flowers is going to be a heck of a pick. I put him at the end of the first. Love the kid. Love everything about this guy. Uh, I'm amazed that somebody maybe mid-first wouldn't even jump at him, but if he gets into the late first, early second round, I think Zay Flowers, three to four years from now, we look back and say, why wasn't he the first receiver off the board? Uh, this kid is outstanding. Uh, said his character. Todd talks about character of Will Anderson Jr., Will Levis and Bryce Young and the quarterbacks and all that. Uh, this guy really gets it. Uh, and I think he's NFL ready. What he did up there at BC speaks volumes about character because he could have left. Jordan Addison left Pitt to go to USC. Others are leaving every day mm -hmm. all over the transfer yeah. portal, right? He didn't leave Boston College. And that team, Todd, that he thought was going to be able to get him the ball. The quarterback, Dracovic, gets hurt now. He's transferred. The O-line had injuries from August all through the season. And yet, he was out there competing, getting it done. Electric with the ball in his hands after the catch. He can run reverses, jet sweeps. You can do so many things with Zay Flowers. If he's a, Imagine him at Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, that, that's where he belongs. One of those offenses. He's a slot receiver who can do a lot of different things. And, I, and I've told you this before. Jeff Halfley, when I talked to him in August, right before camp, right, right during camp before the season started, he, he, like, he, he couldn't rave enough about this guy. He's like, everyone knows that Zay's getting the ball. We don't have anyone else. We got three offensive linemen that are down. Like, I, like, I don't know what we're going to do offensively because I, I just, we just don't have the X's. We, we got the X's and O's, not the Jimmy's and Joe's. But Zay would always be there in the building working as hard or harder than anyone there. 
and everyone knew when the ball was coming to him and he still found a way. That's what I love. Like, you got to have a little dog in you as a wide receiver, and he's got that energy and that dog that you look for. He's going to be a great slot receiver in the NFL. Yeah, so obviously Mel and Todd are super high on this guy, but just keep in mind, he isn't your traditional big body wide receiver like so many are hoping for in Baltimore. Flowers stands just 5'10", 172 pounds, but that undersized frame did not stop him from putting up big senior year numbers at BC. He posted career highs across the board in 2022 with 78 total receptions, over 1,000 receiving yards, and 12 touchdowns. Big final year up there in Boston. All right, so what was it that got this whole conversation started linking Baltimore to Flowers. Yeah, so it was during Sunday's practice in preparation for this week's East-West Shrine Bowl, which of course is the invitation-only showcase game for standout seniors that's played every year. Uh, That's when Flowers popped up and raised some eyebrows on Sunday. Now the next day, and this is according to Pro Football Network, members of the Ravens scout team were, quote, connected to the hip of Flowers and stayed with him as he moved around the field. At times, it seemed the Ravens had multiple scouts escorting Flowers around the field, talking receiver technique with the Boston College product, close quote. And Pro Football Network also went on to add that, quote, they made it hard for anyone else to get a word in with them, close quote. So Sarah, again, I recognize it's early, but at least the team seems to be doing its due diligence on a position that we both know, we all know, has to be at the top of its offseason priority list. And before we fly, some other quick news items, all from the Pro Bowl in Las Vegas. We'll start with, yes, Pro Bowl quarterback Tyler Huntley, who kind of seemed like he had something to prove after so many people said he didn't belong there, even though it is for a bunch of fun skill challenges. But guess what? Snoop finished with the second highest score in the precision passing challenge only behind Derek Carr. Hey, he in his bag right now. Looking now. The time ooh, goes down ooh, quick, ooh. you guys. It's already at 20 seconds. He got the drone. Yeah, he you go. The there he goes. There Show him why you're here, there Tyler. Come okay. on. By okay. the way, that drone is worth five points, so he went for a nice one there. Ooh. Come on. People talking about he shouldn't be here. Look at him going ahead and put on the show. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. <laughs> hey, hey, if you're going to be right here, now. put on one. If you're going to be here, put on. Put a show put on, on if you're going to be here. All right, he got his 10. Coming. There you go. Come go. On He's now. got, all right, 21. So we'll see if he can add to 10. That would make it 31. Meanwhile, Marlon Humphrey got the final elimination in dodgeball in order to win the game for his AFC defensive team over the AFC offense. He also participated in the longest drive challenge. And even though he didn't beat his fellow NFL players, that didn't stop Humphrey from declaring that he could take on golf legend Tiger Woods. Nobody has better hips than cornerbacks, and that's what golf's all about. Focus. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's got to get down. Good. That's, that's on the grid. Going down, oh, that's good. Martin, that's a good ball. That's a Talk good ball. Me. Walk around. Talk Give me the number. You got to guess the number right now. I'm going to say 287. It's 280. No, that's 290. 300 on Dang. the grid. 300, we're in play. What do you think you're better at right now? Playing man coverage or hitting a ball off a tee box? Honestly, yeah. the way I just performed. I think I could go to a course right now and see Tiger, and it could be really competitive. Tiger, so, see a tiger? No, or? no, the, the woods. Okay. No. okay. <laughs> and finally, we also saw highlights from fullback Patrick Ricard just casually snagging one-handed punts because, of course, he did. And probably my favorite sight to see was Roquan Smith standing side-by-side side with Ray Lewis as they were catching up. And, Bobby, I'll just say this. I know the Pro Bowl gets joked about and dumped on, and I get it. But I always enjoy watching a bunch of NFL stars get together and just have fun. It makes me feel like a kid again, and it feels good not to take everything so seriously in football for just one weekend. Thanks for listening to The Morning Vault. We created our show to keep you plugged into all things Ravens. If you've been enjoying our content, please consider joining one of our membership platforms at patreon.com backslash Ravens Vault podcast. As you probably know by now, we have been betting on ourselves by creating content independently from any big broadcast station or corporation. And with your membership support, you'll give us a shot 
at continuing to churn out daily Ravens content for years to come. Yeah, and a special shout out to our newest patron, Dion Coleman. We appreciate your support. And we'd also love to hear comments and questions or if you'd be interested in advertising. So you can reach us by email via Baltimore Ravens Vault at gmail.com. That is all the time we've got today, but the vault will be back Monday morning with the Ravens news you need to know. <laughs>